Today, I'm going to 100% Devil May Cry 5. And I have to say, if you're planning on tackling this DLC unprepared, it can be almost as hard as the Platinum. Now, if you haven't heard, I Platinum Devil May Cry 5 about two years ago. It was my greatest gaming achievement up to date, and I'm still riding that hype train. I have platinumed. I've platinumed. I've platinumed. I've platinumed Devil May Cry 5. Devil you need to shut the f*** up. To get said platinum, I had to complete all 21 missions on all six difficulties the game offers, and on top of that, S rank all missions on all difficulties. So in other words, be absolutely flawless with combat combos or go through each mission without getting hit. It's an absolute pain in the buttocks to say the least. It was essentially two years of pain, more tears that I care to admit, and more pain. I did make a couple of videos on it back then, but now the novelty's gone. A ton of other people have platinumed it now, so it's not that special. This guy's platinumed it twice. How sad is it? to brag about platinuming Devil May Cry 5. Now it's worth noting Troy also made a video ranking most of the Trophy Hunter YouTubers in an ultimate platinum YouTuber tier list. Now I'm gonna be honest here, I don't usually trust anybody that has hairy ears or if they're named after a location. But it's a new year, so you know, I'll make an exception. Now feel free to go and watch the video, but long story short, yours truly got a B rank. Not bad if I say so myself. Now with Devil May Cry 5 being the peak of gaming mastery, it made me wonder, what rank would I get if I 100%ed Devil May Cry 5? F. Anyway, the main hype about the DLC is being able to play as Virgil, arguably the cooler twin. Even though most of you guys don't think so, you're obviously not motivated enough. In addition to this, we'll need to complete the Bloody Palace with all available characters, a mode where you take on waves of enemies throughout 101 floors. The catch here is, if you die, it's a game over and you get sent back to the beginning. So essentially permadeath. Pretty brutal. And this is where the difficulty comes in if you go into it unprepared. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, let's break down the trophies. There are only five in total for the DLC, four bronze and one silver. Seems hardly worth my time. Like any other game though, we needed a plan. You leave the plan in to me. Step one was to complete the Bloody Palace with the three main characters. Step two was to unlock Virgil and complete his missions on Dante Must Die difficulty in order to unlock his super costume. Step three was to complete the Bloody Palace with Virgil. And finally, step four was to pop the final miscellaneous trophy. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Drop my bow. I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bad number drop low. Mama called me and she happy with the girl. So first in line for the Bloody Palace was V. Now it's worth mentioning that rank doesn't matter in Bloody Palace, thank god. So you can use auto combo and the super costumes for infinite devil trigger. The only catch is, your health doesn't regenerate while in devil trigger mode. Now I did choose V's super costume, and naturally since I hadn't played for a couple of years, I was a bit rusty. Nonetheless I decided not to activate auto combo. I wanted to be honourable. How do we turn auto combo on? Aha! That didn't last long. Now after auto combo was activated, it was absolute child's play. I cleared each stage quicker than when Bitcoin crashed, and playing with V was basically button mashing the game. Button mashing for the win. Even when I reached the boss stages, it was incredibly easy. All I gotta do is run. My fingers are getting tired of button mashing, I'm not gonna lie. Bye Goliath, nice knowing you. Falcon Punch! Nice. And let's get one thing clear, I'm definitely not complaining, yet. It was so easy with V, I didn't actually get hit until stage 35. And that's only because of V's stupid auto kill. God, the amount of failed S ranks I got because of that. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't get hit again, because that would be a lie. The difficulty does rank up every 20 floors or so, but it was still easy enough to work through. I cleared stage after stage, slicing demons like a pizza delivery guy on turbo mode until stage 90 arrived. Cerberus was a bit of a wake up call. Run! I got hit more times than in any other stage, and unlike the previous stages, I was forced to be on high alert. It wasn't the hardest boss I've ever fought, but it was definitely a change from what I'd fought before. Every time he's after this, every mother time. Correct. Floors 91 to 97 felt pretty easy, so before I knew it, I was at the final challenge. All of Virgil's forms back to back. The first phase was easy enough, since all I had to do was break the crystal, and all he did was sit there like a plum. 
The second form was a little bit trickier, mainly because of those annoying tracking tentacles, and we all know how dangerous tentacles can be from all the hentai. That's every time that gets me. The strategy here was to just run in circles and let my beasties do the work, while continuously failing to dodge the tentacles. Now I can only assume this boss was a reincarnation of a phone book because he just refused to die. Oh, you fanny. He's got like one HP, man. I can't believe he brought the crystal out with one HP. That's just not true. Still did it. Surprisingly, the third form was the easiest for me. I used the same strategy as the previous stage, and since he'd shed his tentacles, he had the same amount of danger as Sakura in Naruto. Emotional, damn it! Alright, Virgil time. Now, I believe in the famous phrase, if it works, it doesn't need changing. So I used the same strategy. As expected, it did work. Until he busted out his devil trigger. Then things started to get a little tricky. Okay, serious now. <laughs> Definitely getting serious. I've got his moves! Hit three. Yeah, it is. True. Oh, sh! I got distracted. Oh, no! Oh, I better not die. I swear to God. Alright, he's concentrating now, boys. Getting, uh, getting a bit dangerous. Thankfully, Virgil's Devil Trigger is temporary, so once it ran out, I took my chance. Finish him off! Finish him! If you guys are Devil Trigger again, I think I'm not gonna win. Oh, sh! Get out! Oh, <laughs> that was close! That was way too close! Yeah, we did it! And with that, B's run of the Bloody Palace was complete. Don't pretend to be Virgil, I mean, you're not so good. Alright? Stop embarrassing yourself. B rank! Quite fitting. Nero is next, my favourite character to play as. He has a solid moveset, a pretty OP devil trigger, and his gear bearer arm pretty much gave me my S ranks. However, that was two years ago. Now with Nero, I didn't use auto combo at all because I found it easy to dodge right. when I knew what combo I was doing. The first few floors went as expected. That was fast. The enemies weren't really a problem. It was remembering the combos and moves that gave me the most issues. More times than not, I found myself just spamming the same combos over and over again. But I'm not gonna lie, it, it was a lot easier with, uh, with V. Nero's still pretty bad, that's not. It wasn't until I reached the first boss that I noticed just how rusty I was. An angry boy! Oh, I remember that. But at the same time, my muscle memory was slowly coming back. Oh wait, I can grab him, can't I? Forgot about that. Get launched! That's a lot of damage. Time to die. I carried on powering through, and since I'd remembered that Nero actually has a grab, I started using it more to look more badass. When I got the timing right, anyway. I felt like I was back to my DMC Prime, but I was wrong. I started to notice some difficulty spikes as I progressed, especially in stages where Furies were involved. Bro! Luckily, a legend in chat told me about the shuffle move, which is essentially Nero's parry. Oh, that! So for the next few stages, I tried implementing it in my moveset. He also mentioned I'd be needing it for stage 60. And at this point, I had no idea how right he was. That didn't work. <laughs> oh, it worked! Got to get the hang of this. No, I'm not. I carried on getting valuable advice from chat. Don't get hit! Why didn't I think of that? Before I knew it, stage 60 was next. Since I'd never fought this boss with Nero, I approached it as I would any other boss. There we 
very nice. And quite honestly, it was going well. But the moment this guy turned Super Saiyan. Oh, oh. all right. Shit, I'm going to die. Oh my god, I'm so dead. It was over faster than a can of coke blowing up in your face when you drop it down the stairs. A full hour of progress lost. But I wasn't ready to give up. This time I decided to take my time, practice parrying and counter attacking so I was better prepared for stage 60. Even though I lost more health in this run, it felt much more natural playing with Nero and I cleared the stages a lot faster. Come on. Wrecked. And before I knew it, I was at stage 60 once again. Annoying me. It's hard to dodge though. What happened there? Inevitably, the power-up stage arrived, so I decided to try and interrupt it with the special Devil Breaker ability. But I was out of range. Not even hitting him, man! Oh, well, that was wasted. When this happened, I started panicking. Oh, fuck, the ball did me there. And I was as good as dead. Oh, bro. I can't believe it, man. I'm done. Turns out I wasn't done at all. I don't want to end on a, on a low. We're ending on a high. Dr. Faust incoming. Naturally with Dr. Faust, I blasted through the stages, leaving behind red orbs as if it was a confetti at a demon party. And a bit of foreshadowing happened here for what was yet to come. I'd hate to get to the end of this and have no red orbs left. Anyway, I meteored all the way up until stage 97. I'd gone from 4 million red orbs to a measly 900,000. And at this point, I started panicking. I decided to save my red orbs and just play naturally while using my devil trigger. The downfall of this method is that Dante doesn't stagger when he's in demon mode. And if you're not careful... Oh bro, what? No. Oh, I can't believe it! Nothing but failure. You were an embarrassment. With back-to-back -back failures, I decided to do something I've never done before in this game. Not even when I was going for the Platinum. Practice. I spent a fair few hours practicing the main combos I would be using with Nero, as well as getting used to using the parry to make sure the next time I attempted Bloody Palace, I was ready. Was it easier after practicing? No. And roughly after 45 minutes, I was back at stage 60, face to face with my nemesis once again. I kill you! As usual, I started really strong, nailing the parries and dodging the way I should. It was then time for the power up stage and it's over. After attempt number 582 and that 1 HP, I managed to clutch the win. Was it skill or was it luck? I don't care. All I cared about was that I'd finally killed the hardest boss for Nero in Bloody Palace. He is the hardest boss, right? <laughs> anyway, I carried on powering through the rest of the stages with my confidence at an all-time high. And before long, it was time for Big Daddy himself, the motivational king, Virgil. As usual, the first phase is fairly simple. Virgil doesn't really pose much of a threat unless you become careless. His devil trigger, however, is a force to be reckoned with. You can't afford to do much more than just dodge when he's on a roll, because if he does hit you, let's just say he's not pulling any punches. Oh my God. Now, I didn't really notice this with V, or maybe I didn't give Virgil enough time, but he summoned his doppelganger here. And my God, did get real. I was getting hit from every single direction I turned to. I felt like I was in Birmingham or something. I ain't the fucking place. Luckily, just like his double trigger, the doppelganger is also temporary. But as soon as he ran out of juice, I didn't waste my opportunity. 
And with that, Nero's bloody palace was also complete. By far the hardest one. Only Dante left. Now the plan here was to just blast everything with Dr. Faust. I mean, it makes sense since it's Dante's spirit bomb. For that though, I needed red orbs. A hell of a lot of them. We go back in time slightly, I burnt through about 5 million red orbs in 97 stages. But this time I thought it was best to be safe than sorry. That should be enough, right? Even with a stupid amount of red orbs, I was still skeptic. That it'd be extra safe, I only used Dr. Faust in the stages that I thought I really needed to. Until I did it once and then I got carried away. Of course, with that came vulnerability, and before I knew it, I was looking pretty daring. Oh, no! It was time to be smart and calm it down before I reached controller smashing levels. I balanced my gameplay between Dr. Faust and normal swordplay, which worked wonders, and made me look like I knew what I was doing, until I reached the final few bosses. Here, I couldn't really rely on Dr. Faust because I didn't have enough time to charge it. So enter Sin Devil Trigger. With this form, I was able to make quick work of the first two phases. No, that's a lot of damage! And then in the third phase, I bided my time while dodging and countering. And when that sweet moment came, I didn't waste it. Finally, it was time for the sibling rivalry to come to an end. Not gonna lie, it was much harder than what I thought it would be. Virgil isn't the type of guy to just stand there and wait for you to kill him. But I never really got a chance to fully charge nope. Dr. Faust. I had to do it in stages with the small time slots I had. In the end, I didn't really want to risk it, and I decided to just finish him off with a cheeky stinger attack. I'd finally conquered the bloody palace with all three main characters, and I popped the Path of Conqueror's trophy. Step one was finally complete. Fair to say, without enough red orbs and the super costumes to give you infinite devil trigger, you're in for a pretty miserable time if you're not skilled enough with the combat. Which backs up my statement that the DLC is almost as hard as the Platinum, if you jump into it unprepared. Next, it was time to finally unleash Big Daddy Ken. And for $2.99, it was an absolute steal. Shut up and take my money. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I was going to complete Virgil's missions on the Dante Must Die difficulty to unlock his super costume. In case you're not aware, this is arguably the hardest difficulty in the game. Anyway, the initial cutscene was pretty cool with the events being shown from Virgil's point of view while showcasing how much of a badass this man actually is. Playing as him, however, was a different story. The prologue was an absolute disaster, but I just blamed it on not having any skills yet. So as soon as I had the chance, I unlocked all his skills and abilities and popped the Concentrated Strength trophy. With Virgil as deadly as ever, I was ready to have some fun. Turns out it was the demons that were having all the fun instead. Playing with a new character for the first time on the hardest difficulty isn't the best idea. On top of not having a clue what his moves were, I found it really awkward not having a double jump and having to press X and then circle to do one. So I died. Quite a lot. Luckily, I had a healthy amount of red and gold orbs that kept me going. When I reached mission four, I got absolutely destroyed by the boss. and my patience ran out. I knew I had two choices. I was either going to learn how to play as Virgil properly or activate auto combo. I chose auto combo. Disgusting. Say what you want. I just want to get this DLC finished. I got my backlog to get back to. With auto combo on, it truly shows just how badass Virgil actually is and how cool I would have looked if I decided to take the time to learn his moveset. Now I still died. A lot. <laughs> Luckily with Virgil, S-Ranks weren't a thing either, or else this would have become much, much worse. The soundtrack was also an absolute banger. Another Devil May Cry song worthy of my Spotify playlist. The only thing I'm a bit disappointed in is that the developers didn't give Virgil his own storyline. He just has the same path as everyone else. Say what you want about DMC Devil May Cry, but they did Virgil justice by creating his own path in the DLC even though it was terrible. Fuck you! Anyway, I powered through the rest of Virgil's missions looking like an absolute pro. Cue the Virgil montage.
Then I reached Dante. He was stood where Virgil would have been, which was a touch I liked. Oh my god, what a banger! Anyway, I expected him to have a ton of combos and different weapons. What I didn't expect were all the stun locks. I genuinely feel like I died more often to Dante's two phases than all the other missions combined. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Since I was popping gold orbs in the same frequency as a Dragon Ball character pops Zenzu beans, my victory was inevitable. So after beating Dante, I finally popped the sibling rivalry trophy. And I'll say it one last time, the DLC is almost as hard as a platinum if you're going to go in unprepared. This would have taken an absolute eternity if I didn't have all those gold orbs. Now that step two was complete and I'd obtained the super costume, it was time to tackle the bloody palace one last time. Now I have to say, I found Virgil the easiest character to use. Even easier than V. With auto combo on and infinite devil trigger, it was an absolute breeze. I alternated between using normal combos, sin devil trigger, and the doppelganger. With bosses, I chose to use the doppelganger and sin devil trigger together to absolutely melt their health bars. <laughs> After a few stages, I remembered Judgment Cut End was a thing, and, well, I think I've said enough. With Virgil's insane skill set, there wasn't one single stage that bothered me. Until I reached stage 100. And it wasn't because of the boss, he was a pushover. Why are you bullying me? Because I was playing with Virgil, I expected the last stage of Bloody Palace to be Dante. And with my track record against him, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit nervous. However, to my relief, it ended up being Virgil. I'm in danger! But after demonstrating who was the superior version, I popped the This Is Power trophy. All I had left to do now was complete Mission 19 only using Yamato. Of course, since I only played on the Dante Must Die difficulty, that's the difficulty I had to do it on. With Super Virgil and a very healthy amount of gold orbs left, I treated this mission as if it was Judgment End the game. And just like that, I popped the Heart of a Swordsman trophy and the DLC was finally complete. Which means I've got at least another two more years of bragging rights. I could finally delete this game from my console again, but not without a little bit of temptation. No! If this video does get a thousand likes though, I'll platinum another Devil May Cry game. Until then, feel free to watch one of these videos. So come on, Troy, what rank do I get now? Uh, four.